All right, so what is going on, everyone? In today's forecast, we'll be looking at coming active weather pattern over the next few days, including the potential and likelihood for a major storm to cross country, bringing with it a swath of snow that could be heavy and would deliver several inches of snow to portions of the country, as well as a severe weather update once again. This is expected to spout across certain parts of the country, so let's just get diving into details for today's forecast. So we're going to be looking at some warnings here. It does look like we have winter, winter storm warnings in effect from Arizona into mountainous areas of southeastern Utah and New Mexico into Oklahoma, Texas, Pean Handles, as well as southern Colorado and the por western portions of Kansas and Nebraska, as well as the Wyoming, Montana border area, as a little sliver of Idaho there as well. Winter weather advisories do exist surrounding the southwestern mountains warnings, as well as much of the northern plains in the Midwest, from Montana into Idaho, Wyoming, the Dakotas, and portions of Minnesota, northeast Nebraska, and surrounding areas as well, with winter storm watches in effect as well, from Nebraska, Kansas area, into the Iowa Missouri border across from Iowa and far northern Illinois. While we do have a windy side to this one as well, with various wind advisories from the southwest, and then another region including East Oklahoma er, forward across much of the Midwest and Central United States, even from Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama in the northern portions, across the Ohio River into Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan, with even a little area in the western New York State area as well with the wind advisories. High wind advisories warnings do exist in Wyoming, Nebraska, as well as New Me as well as southern New Mexico and surrounding areas including southwestern Texas and as well as southern California. So now we're going to be diving more into this upcoming storm. So let's get straight into this with the more details to come. So for our current day one outlook from our storm prediction setter, which is the official outlooks by the way, we have a day one marginal for eastern Kansas into northwest Missouri and extreme southern portions of Iowa and Nebraska near the lower Missouri Valley. It does look like we have a 2% toy risk along with a 5% wind risk and a 5% hail risk, which are all marginal risks for each hazard accordingly. Now we do have a very go ahead today too, and we have a broad slight risk across portions of the southern area of the country, whereas we have a slight risk extending from eastern Texas, Oklahoma into Louisiana, Mississippi, and even western portions of Kentucky and Tennessee across most of Arkansas as well. Whereas we have the hazards for 5-10 risk of fires equivalent to a slight risk, including much of a slight risk area from the Oklahoma-Texas border into western Tennessee and Mississippi. Now we do have a 15% wind risk across the entirety of the slight risk area, including all the areas that are again in slight risk. While there are some adjustments with the 15% slight hail risk, descending further down into Texas-Louisiana border compared to the wind risk there, and also a little lower for the hail risk in the western Kentucky and Tennessee area compared to the wind risk as well. It is also said this is going to be an all hazards day, but so will be day three. We have a very broad slight risk that is extending from the Gulf Coast of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Panhandle, all the way into central and portions of the country, and even into Ohio River and the Great Lakes there, all the way to the coast of Ohio on the Great Lakes, as well as Pennsylvania and even extreme western New York State, which is a pretty rare feat especially given for the middle of February. So now we're going to be diving more into today's model guidance. We're still looking at the available guidance we have from the NAM as of the most recent one. It does, it does look like we have a wide area of rain covering much of the Midwest and Central United States, coming from Canterbury across Minnesota all the way down to near the Gulf Coast. This is going to be set to move northeast. This is our first system, by the way before we have our next major storm. It could bring an area of heavy snow and even the blizzard threat. Don't forget guys, there are blizzard warnings in effect for Dakotas and Minnesota. That would bring that snow from eastern Nebraska 
into the Dakotas and into western portions of Iowa and Minnesota for tonight and tomorrow morning. The snow area will extend all the way into Minnesota and even northern Wisconsin and UP of Michigan during the AM, especially of Wednesday, before these lingering precipitation does move out later in the day on Wednesday. And then our second system all the way down here in the Central Plains will begin to develop with an area of snow across Central Plains and surrounding regions as of Wednesday evening. Now it does look like this will develop into our next major system as we head further east. It does look like that band of snow will probably come through Kansas, Missouri, southeast Iowa, and into northern Illinois and lower Michigan during Thursday. And even a widespread area of rain and storms, and even severe weather that would be expected across southeastern portions of the country as well. It does look like this band of snow will keep moving through southern Canada and portions of northern New England from Thursday into Friday morning but completely moving out by midday on Friday of the Northeast region. It does look like it'll be pretty quick moving, but we have some weather outbreaks that we could be concerned about this time, not just to tomorrow, but even Thursday. Again, we highlighted these severe weather potential days on our some sooner outlooks earlier in this video. So do keep in mind there's be a wide range of impacts with the system, as it'll be coming through mainly for the next few days. So it's gonna be quite active. This first system is a little potent though, with the cold core set up again, focused on Kansas, Missouri, and the surrounding areas, even for the threat for a brief period or two, along with some isolated damaging wind gusts threat and large hail with this first system here this evening. And then it'll completely be moving out of the UP Michigan. We could see some lingering precipitation un until midday on Wednesday before we see our next system moving through the the central and eastern portions of the country mainly, with that band of snow again setting up from the central plains, moving through the Midwest slash Great Lakes region and into northern New England. Again, this is going to be m pretty quickly moving through, especially on Wednesday night and Thursday. Again, it seems to be quick, quickly moving and then clearing the New England region by midday on Friday. So it does look like there will be some kind of quick pace sort of for us. But again, heavy snow will be a concern as we saw as well, and we'll be seeing once more on snowfall accumulations. All right, so we're going to be looking at snowfall according to models that we can see here. So Euro is showing a healthy band of snowfall being widespread, three six inches within that band from Colorado into Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa. Wisconsin, Michigan, and in two portions of northern Maine and northern New England, and everywhere else that is included within this band. It does look like some of the heavier snow could, of course, fall in the Southern Rockies there, but not much with the Northern Plains system. How it does look like a few inches could fall in South Dakota and Minnesota, like at least what the Euro is showing. Now moving on to the Canadian model here, it is showing a few inches, mainly in the eastern Dakotas, but also some of it could end up being in northern Minnesota for the heavier snowfall, with 3 to 5 inches generally there. The band that this model is showing is also coming from similar regions, although it is also coming from Nebraska, much of Kansas, into Iowa, northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin, and then up into southern Canada and even northern Maine with several inches possible, maybe even six plus inches in the localized areas, such as really anywhere in the heavier swath. Although this one's taking it across Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin for any localized accumulations of upwards of six inches. GFS is really going on board with the heaviest snowfall here, with at least a wide swath of six plus inches coming from southeast Nebraska into Iowa, in Wisconsin and Lower Michigan, and then up into southern Canada, mostly with the heaviest snow staying clear of northern Maine for now. But also, some of that heavier snow could fall across some Colorado, Kansas area, and even in the New Mexico area as well. While the NAM is showing a bit rather con inconsistent ban from the portion of eastern Kansas to Missouri and Illinois, while a more consistent ban 
with three to plus six plus inches of snowfall possibly from southern Michigan, southern Canada, and northern New England with this upcoming band. Now it does look like an area of three to six inches could fall as well across the uh, central plains while the National Weather Service Blend has that band coming through with with a swath of six plus inches possible, especially from eastern Colorado into Nebraska, Kansas border into the southern central Iowa area mainly before it amounts taper off with three to five inches across Wisconsin, north and north Michigan to southern Canada, and then mostly staying to the north of the Canadian border as well. Whereas the Canadian other Canadian model is basically the same thing with the Canadian model, although with some key differences here, northern New England could get some of that heavier snow as well with three to five inches across much of the region, including Maine. We could see six to eight inches in some areas and even across the uh, Iowa into Illinois, Wisconsin border area in Michigan as well, where that localized heavy accumulations could occur. Interesting though, UK does have a gap in the Lower Missouri Valley in snowfall amounts, with one area across Colorado, Kansas, and Nebraska, while the other is more or less in the Iowa Missouri border, coming from Illinois into Wisconsin and Michigan, as well as northern New England. And this would generally be areas of three to five plus inches of snow, although in some places as well, you get six to seven inches locally, especially across eastern Michigan surrounding regions. And then generalize same thing here, three to six inches across this, this region in the central southern plains. Although some of those areas, especially towards the Colorado and New Mexico border, could overall get heavier snowfall within this system. Ice will definitely be something to look at with this system here. So we're going to be taking a look at that. In fact, Euro has a narrow band of ice coming from maybe more patchy areas in northern Missouri and Illinois, and then getting more concentrated from southern Michigan into portions of New England with those ice accumulations there. Some of that could get up to nearly ice from criteria, especially with the heavy accumulations for ice in northern New England. But then again, it's mostly below the ice from criteria and more or less up to a tenth of an inch across the majority of the band with this model. Canadian model is very inconsistent with the band, but has some places getting upwards of five hundredths of an inch, such as the one across eastern Missouri into central Illinois, and then some on and off areas of ice from lower Michigan into New England, while the GFS, however, does show the same thing here, although a very thin narrow band would be coming from the Iowa Missouri border across northern Illinois and southern Lower Michigan, and then again across the North New England region. And Naomi is actually kind of a little far south, but it is showing that from eastern Missouri into central Illinois, northern portions of Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and then across extreme portions of southern Lower Michigan, and then across the northeast once again. The National Forest Service blend has some, just some really thin blazes that would be coming from Missouri into Illinois, Lower Michigan, Southern Canada, and then across Northern Maine. Again, these are very, very light glazes, not even five hundredths of an inch. And in some places, it's just up to a hundredth. So actually, I meant five hundredths if I said that wrong. For, yeah, this is going to be generally under five hundredths of an inch according to the blend. Now, however, we do look at the Canadian branch here. It is a very similar story as it usually is, considering the Canadian model and its own branch are technically the same thing as per obvious. However, the heavier accumulations from the ice would be again coming from southern Ontario into the northeast, with some areas could be getting up to ice from criteria in those darker areas of ice there. So now we're going to be also looking at severe weather areas and then kind of call it a day once again. All right, so let me look at a quick timing overview for our Wednesday, Thursday severe weather threats. Now Wednesday is going to be looking like mainly a nocturnal event, or in other words, at night, which we'll start to see some storms fire up across eastern Texas, and then also across much of the south. It's going to be mainly from the evening and even to the overnight, and we'll start to see this kind of convection blossom right over eastern Texas and southern Oklahoma, southeast Oklahoma, really, and then other areas in the south-central U.S. 
from Wednesday night and then it'll continue to Thursday morning, which will spread further east into the southeastern Ohio Valley region. And we will get to this area as well. And we'll do that just about now because it's been... And then for Thursday, we do have the area of storms that will be continuing to advance across southeastern Ohio Valley. We'll see this area of storms from about about when morning strikes, 4 to 5 a.m. local time in areas such as Ohio Valley and Southeast, that's where we will be seeing some storms, at least according to the latest of the Nanthu kilometer. Again, this will be something we'll start to see Thursday morning. This is again about 4 to 5 a.m. local time. And then we'll continue to see this area of storms advance as this wintry side does move through the Midwest and Great Lakes. However, this area, at least according to the NAM, again, this is just one model, it is showing our, a squall line that is moving through the southeast from Mississippi, Alabama area, up through. This is, again, I'm going to be focusing on, this is Thursday around daybreak, 6, 7, 8 p.m. local time, squall line through Alabama into Tennessee, Kentucky, and then some disorganized showers and even some severe storms possibly in Ohio, West Virginia. So it's more organized south of the Kentucky-Tennessee border. And then it's mainly disorganized with, again, potentially an isolated scattered severe weather threat up to the north here in eastern Ohio Valley. Again, we're going to be looking at this moving through areas such as Middle Tennessee, right about during the afternoon hours on Thursday, as well as central Kentucky. It will mostly be moving through Mississippi around midday but it'll start to come through Memphis at about 9, 10 a.m. local time, and then be moving through Mississippi throughout the midday, and even kind of coming out of southeast Mississippi around daybreak, and then moving to Alabama during the evening hours, and then it'll be moving through the eastern portions up to Kentucky, Tennessee during the evening. And this will be really moving through through the night through Alabama, Georgia. So it'll be pretty far out already with how far this line has gone, it will start to weaken as well at about midnight Friday. However, again, this is going to be something to keep on alert to. I hope you found this information to be very useful, useful, helpful, and informational for your future plans in the near term, as this storm is predicted to happen. And if you did, please do consider hitting the subscribe button as it really, really help us a lot get this forecast out there. And I hope you have a great rest of your night, everyone and stay safe and stay tuned next video.